Reading SF Tower in Sunbury, Pennsylvania from a 1950 photo from the collection of Robert Wanner. This is the Reading Railroad right-of-way where it crossed the Pennsylvania Railroad right-of-way. And this is what it looks like today. The Reading Signal Bridge and the station are still standing today to show you how much things can change over time. Checkbox 2, proceed from AK-683-683 to CP-679-679 on main track. 3843 one bar checkbox, two over. At present, the RNN consists of two divisions. It's Lehigh Division, which runs from the scranton Wilkesbury area south to about Jim Thorpe, and the Reading Division, which runs from about Jim Thorpe to Reading, Pennsylvania. Track authority number 3843840, the TE NS 1067-1067 North, NORTH, HA683683. Checkbox 2. Just outside of Williamsport, Pennsylvania, about 100 miles north of the state capital of Harrisburg is the former Reading Railroad Newberry Yard. Newberry played an important role in Central Pennsylvania railroading as it was home to the Pennsylvania Railroad, the New York Central, and the Reading Railroads. The yard was turned over to the Penn Central and later Conrail in 1976. Collectively named the Williamsport Cluster by Conrail, Newberry was sold off in August of 1996 to Cedar Cog and is now operated by the Lycoming Valley Railroad. Newberry Yard is unique. Not that it is the largest yard between Harrisburg and Buffalo and was even larger back in the day. Not that it once had five railroads serving it. Not that it's currently over 100 acres and packed with rail lines. What makes the Newberry Yard so special is that this is the center of an economic solar system. In our case, the planets orbiting the yard are manufacturers or rail-to-truck transload sites. Why, just in Newberry alone, there are at least 20 companies around or within the yard. While in Williamsport, you might see one of Lycoming Valley Railroad's striking green and yellow locomotives, some with the Beeline Service logo. Both the colors and the logo are remnants of the Reading Railroad that fell onto Conrail in 1976. On the Union County Industrial Railroad, an LNG transload station was undergoing construction back in 2017. Later that year, I was told that black tank cars of liquid natural gas or maybe even propane were being spotted and unloaded at the station. The Union County Railroad is part of the North Shore Railroad system and operates on tracks that are owned by Cedar Cog and the JRA between Allenwood to the north and Watsontown to the south. These tracks once belonged to the Reading Railroad. According to the Cedar Cog Joint Rail Authority, they'll be installing 7,700 feet of track into the Great Stream Commons north of Allenwood to a currently undeveloped site. The estimated cost to construct the track is estimated at $4.4 million and there may be two or three prospective tenants that are interested in getting rail service. The JRA hopes to secure a grant from the Rural Transit Assistance Program for the construction of this project. A sign at the entrance to the undeveloped Great Stream Commons land north of Allenwood indicates that Moran Logistics has 166 acres of land and approved for 1.7 million square feet. Rail cars to that location will run past the old White Deer train station, which is now the home of the Railway Historical Society of Central Pennsylvania. Mike Widerquist, the plant manager from GAF of New Columbia, Pennsylvania, visited a meeting and gave his insight concerning the expansion of the plant and hiring of numerous workers. GAF is a manufacturing company based in Parsippany, New Jersey, that is primarily focused on the manufacturing of roofing materials for residential and commercial applications. The GAF acronym stands for General, Aniline, and Film and has roots dating back to the late 19th century. With 35 plants nationwide, the New Columbia location currently has 18 rail cars on site hauling in plastic pellets for use in making commercial roofing material and they will be expanding the size of the plant as well as increasing the number of rail cars in the near future. Currently, they have 55 employees at this location that will also be increasing as well. Box two, copied by Humphreys. Okay, at 101, 101 in the PM, dispatch your Kate, over. Number 3840-3840, one box checkbox two, copied by Humphreys. Okay, at 101 in the PM, 101 PM, dispatch Kate, over. Not sir, thank you.
Here in northeastern Pennsylvania, there are several events unfolding. On the Reading and Northern, years of anticipation are finally coming to fruition with the opening of the new Lehigh River Bridge at the Neskahoning Junction near the town of Jim Thorpe. According to the railroad, the construction of this new bridge will permit the progressive movement of trains running between Reading and the scranton wilkes area and will cut the travel time for freight shipments over the length of the system by as much as one day. It's also being touted as the fastest and most economical route into the Marcellus Shale territory in northeastern Pennsylvania, and it will assist in the development of the Port of Philadelphia, allowing unit trains of double-stacked intermodal containers to flow in and out of the port to various points in northeastern United States and Canada. The new bridge will allow a Reading-based crew to make the 230-mile round trip to Wilkesbury and back in 10 hours. Until the new bridge, trains had to change direction in Jim Thorpe to continue to their destinations in either direction. The $14 million bridge was paid for in part with a $10 million grant from the state and is located on a former Conrail route that was once part of the Lehigh Valley. In another part of the RNN system on the Reading Railroad Division side sits the small town of Cressona. Not far from Route 61 and the town of Schoolkill Haven, Cressona is the embodiment of the moniker Coal Country. It's also pure ex-Reading Railroad territory that fell under the control of Conrail on Sea Day, April 1, 1976. Like many railroads, the Reading and Northern earns a little extra revenue by storing cars and has these DPRX tankers in storage all over its system. Since 2012, Trinity Rail and ACF have built thousands of 31,000 gallon crude oil tank cars to meet the growing needs of the oil industry. Mile-long unit trains with 100 plus cars are crisscrossing the United States and Canada every day to deliver crude oil from the oil fields of North Dakota, Wyoming, and Montana to refineries on the East, Gulf, and West Coasts. The Trinity Rail tank car is easily recognizable by its unique trapezoid-shaped end shields. The Deep Rock Refining Company reporting mark DPRX and Trinity Industries Leasing Company reporting mark TILX are two of the most common road names found on today's cars. Tamaqua is Old Reading Railroad in Lehigh and New England Territory. It became Conrail Territory on Sea Day 1976 and then Reading and Northern's Territory when Conrail sold it in the mid-1980s. We were only in town a few minutes when the newly installed signals went from red to green. A southbound was coming into town so we headed straight for the yard. By the time we made it down to street level, the mysterious manifest was crossing the West Broad Street.
From Broad Street, we followed the train into the yard. It was being led by the Seoul, Reading & Northern number 2004, an ex-Detroit, Toledo & Ironton EMD SD38. The train tied down right in front of a loose-covered hopper and the crew was done for the day. Snooping around the yard, we spot a variety of open, coal-hauling hoppers including some with the America's largest anthracite carrier plaque. This, like most of the Reading & Northern today, is a throwback to the original Reading Railroad that once occupied this yard. At the head of these hoppers were SD-40-2s number 3057 and 3055. You might remember them from 2019. As we left Tamaqua Yard in the last workable minutes of daylight, another southbound manifest surprised us. I couldn't get the camera operating fast enough to catch the locomotives, but they were two of the newly acquired XCSX SD50-2s still in blue paint. You'll just have to trust my word on that. The speed of this train clearly shows that it ain't stopping at Tamaqua. Its makeup shows that this is the North Reading Fast Freight heading south to North Reading, Pennsylvania, where it will hand this train off to the Norfolk Southern. While there, it will pick up another train to bring back north to Jim Thorpe and Lee Heighton, where it will hand it over to the Pittston Fast Freight to the Wilkes-Barre-Scranton area. You should remember that train from 2019, too.